There's a $400 difference between these two coins. They're the same condition, minted in the same year at the same place. Keep watching to find out why. Hi collectors, thanks for watching. I'm the collector of coins, and that's right, as I said in the intro, we're featuring two coins that were minted in the same year and from the same mint, 1962 from Denver, and are the exact same condition as graded by PCGS. The only difference is one of these coins is worth $400 more than the other. And we're gonna talk about why. So before we get started, if you're not yet a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel and remember to turn on posting notifications. Okay, so let's take a look at the first coin. Can you spot the difference between the two? And what about now? Can you see any difference between the two? Well, that's right. One of these has received a full Bell Lines designation and is worth $400 more in the same condition as the other one. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the full Bell Lines designation and why it's difficult to achieve and why the coins are worth so much more. And I have a few of my coin dealer friends with me to help talk about it as well. I think uh, Ben Franklin, as important an individual as he at, is in our American history, I'm just not crazy about the coin. Kind of simple. Franklin Half Dollar was after the walking liberties and before the kennedy i'm not really crazy about the obverse or the reverse the smallest eagle on any u.s coinage give me any pizzazz at all no key dates in that series it's just not a great coin in some respects they don't command a premium value so they generally for me just carry silver value unless you get into really really high grade like ms65 with full bell lines on the reverse because they didn't do a great job on giving a lot of detail to liberty bell where the strike is so perfect the bottom is a high point so where you can see complete lines going across you have a lot of times where you had a lot of areas where the bell lines didn't show up either because of worn dies or a weak strike there can also be a pretty big difference in value depending upon the grade, despite the full bell lines designation. For example, at MS65, you're looking at a $250 spread between the two. But at MS66, that gap even gets bigger. And that's generally due to the low population of these coins at these grades with that designation. Franklin half dollars are among the most affordable series out there, but they do offer some challenges. They were only minted for 16 years, and they do have 35 regular issue business right coins between Philadelphia, San Francisco, and Denver. However, given some of the weak strikes, it can be very challenging to find coins in MS65 to MS67 or in that range. And then, of course, if you factor in the Franklin halves that have full bell lines, which is also known as FBL, they're coveted because they represent the best fullest strike, which frankly, to excuse the pun, relatively few Franklin half dollars exhibit business truck that is. It's tough to find business truck Franklin half dollars with complete details, including the horizontal lines near the base of the Liberty Bell. Um, the business truck struck coins with full, uh, full bell lines, I would say that highlights the best quality of um, half, Franklin half dollar examples. And for some dates, that detail is virtually impossible to find. That's why the prices can be so high. So to qualify for the full bell line designation, at least from PCGS, they look at coins that grade MS60 or better and show full separation of the lines on the bottom of the Liberty Bell on the reverse. And to qualify for that designation of FBL, the coin must show no major disturbances, including cuts or marks within those separation of the bell lines. And it's hard to meet those qualifications. Even well-struck Franklin half dollars that are crisp in detail may not get that designation due to um, other contact marks between coins, bag marks, or any surface imperfections after the coin was struck. And there are many factors that can you know, diminish why a well-struck 
Franklin Half Dollar does not get that designation. And that's partly why they demand higher prices. So take a look for them. Pay attention if you come across them, particularly if you're coming across coins that are not graded. Look for the full bell lines and please know that it's very difficult to get that designation. For example, the 1953 Franklin half dollar is characteristically hard to find with full bell lines. Just most of them were weakly struck. So finding one in an MS65 or better grade will command a premium price. To illustrate this, an MS67 full bell lines, which is a very high grade, the finest known is only one example, sold for $69,000. So most of these coins, however, are, are worth in the 60 to 70 dollar range um, and you can find them more plentiful in ms64 or below than you can in ms65 or above in general um, so if you're interested in collecting franklin half dollars they're a great accessible set but decide if you're going to go for the cream of the crop with full bell lines or just start with a date run of just nicely struck with good eye appeal but without the full bell line designation. Either way, they're great coins. They're very underrated, and I personally think they will gain popularity over the next few years. Well, collectors, thanks for watching. I hope you found this informative, and as always, happy collecting.